in this fourth and final section of the guidance systems, um, we're going to talk about how the actual steering is actually done on the tractor. Did you know there's about four different options that you can get for steering um, your implements or your tractors? So we're going to look at all four of those, but importantly, some of these things are actually half the price of, of other parts. So we can actually get you into guidance systems a lot cheaper if you understand about how they actually work. So let's have a look at these four sections now. Well, four ways of steering. This is what hap is happening now. A lot of companies like uh, all CAN bus, CAN bus compliant. So John Deere has been CAN bus compliant the longest. Case is coming up to speed. A lot of the others, uh, European tractors are all CAN bus steered now. So in this case, it was a $30 cable to plug into the CAN bus, and then it, the, the tractor took over, took care of the actual steering bits that are already plumbed into the tractor, and that's you know that's from from the factory. Uh, and some systems, like I think Auto Farm, can plug into the CAN bus. So um, you can plug into, say, a Caterpillar, Caterpillar CAN bus, the John Deere CAN bus, so it talks directly into the electronics of the tractor. Does that make sense? So, but then if you don't have that, like what you've got on your 6630, this then is the other option, is like, there's a Topcon, um, that's an Auto Farm um, steering valve. So that's what you'll pay about 10 grand for. And, and that thing here is called a wheel angle sensor. So it knows which way the wheels are pointing before it engages, okay? So that's the best, probably the best option over, unless you buy a brand new tractor, to steer your tractor uh, aftermarket stuff. You can go to this option, which is what we call steer assist. And that's a John Deere ATU. That's a um, easy steer from Trimble. Um, the old shirt grabber, they're not, I mean, <laughs> they're not, they're not the best, but they're certainly not, uh, they, they, they certainly do a very good job if they're set up properly, a very good job. Uh, not Trimble, that's uh, Auto Farm, I've got that, and Topcon, I've got the same thing, so it, well, yeah, it sort of, it sort of clamps itself around the wheel, and it's got an electric motor in it, there's the electric motor in here with the chain drive. That's obviously just straight onto the wheel. Uh, and the quick steer from Leica is exactly the same as that as well. Just rubs on the wheel. And they, they do perform really well if they're set up right. What they're not very good at is if you change speed, you need to adjust all your settings. Okay? So if you set it up for sowing speed, then you go spraying, you could end up on the roof. I've been in a tractor with, with just like, holy hell, this is not good. So you, sometimes it'll keep up, but like we had, a, we had an ATU and a tractor once that we set up for 10 kilometres an hour and then went up to 25 and it was just going all over the place because it's just set up for that speed. So they take a lot more tuning, but they're half the price of a plumbed in system or even a third of the price of a plumbed in system. And if you've got an old tractor, why go and spend 10 grand on a plumbed in system or 12 grand and you've got to sell it with the tractor essentially? Some of them you can pull off, but essentially it's going to go with the tractor. Whereas this, sell it off, put it on eBay and someone will pick it up. They're only about three to five thousand dollars now. They're even getting cheaper. These used to be five grand, but I think I heard the other day they were getting rid of them for three even. So, and like the ATU will fit any tractor. It doesn't have to be John Deere. And same with the uh, the quick, the easy steer. They they can fit any tractor. They got brackets for every tractor. The other option is implement steer. Um, like we talked about on on uh, banana farmer equipment, he's got steerable steerable caster wheels. Or this option is the um, uh, Auto Farm one with steerable coulters. Trimble has a true tracker, same sort of thing, steerable coulters. It basically, it, it just doubles the cost of your unit because you've got to have another whole receiver, you've got to have the steerable wheels, and then it talks to the same screen. So, well, some of them talk, you need two screens, but generally, yeah, you can get them on a one screen, so it does two different things. I had a guy that once he put this on his on his tractor, and he was trying to do a nudge. He's nudge, 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 and he thought the bloody stupid thing's not nudging. Turned around, and the implement was just about overtaking him because he nudged the implement, not the tractor. <laughs> I could hate to think the stresses on that poor thing as he was nudging it across. Oh. But you know that's a really good option. You've got sloping ground. Um, 
and if you want complete control or if you've got a banana farmer, I'd recommend getting those steerable wheels on it from go. The other fantastic thing you really should be looking at, without a doubt, is section boom control. Like these little aftermarket units are three and a half grand. And like you did in a GPS, and obviously the better the GPS system, the more accurate and reliable this is going to be. But what it does is automatically it just connects into your, if you've got a section controller now, manual section controller, it'll just connect direct, directly into that. And as you come over treated areas, it'll just shut down and start up automatically. Right, eh? If you buy like an FMX screen from Trimble or a John Deere GS2 screen, your screen's already got that in there. <laughs> yep. Section control. You've already got it in your screen. You know, you don't need. You might have to pay extra, but I don't know. But it's all there. And um, yeah, so and like headlands, it'll just shut down automatically each section as you go over it. And you know, I, I just don't know why more people aren't just hooking straight into this stuff because it's just. Do you? Oh, I've got guys with TV screens now. They're too busy watching TV. But this is a paddock up at Neil Johansson's up at Wowen. And I know it's a really terrible shaped paddock, right? And I'm probably sure you haven't got any paddocks like that much. He, he, well, I calculated the area that was 80 hectares off the map. And without guidance, section control, he used to fill it up for a 100 hectare paddock. So he was 25% inefficient in that paddock every spray. And we did, after he did this, he just, just grown mung me and said, geez, I just did seven sprays in that paddock. And we worked out yesterday, it was $1,100, didn't we? $1,100 for that crop alone that he's just wasted in chemical on that one paddock. So, you know, it doesn't take much to pay some of these things back when you've got these odd shaped paddocks like we have up in CQ. If you're in northern New South Wales and you've got square paddocks, it's not going to be of much benefit to you. But up here, and it's the quickest way of A, reducing your chemical bill, but B, the whole reef issue, pesticide runoff stuff is really important, no double ups. <laughs>